It's a good day to brew, baby. What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, Millsy. Back at home, Cam come here. We're back for another episode of Millsy Brews. I, show my, I brew my version 1.0 deck list of the commander in front of us on my quest out brew. Your favorite magic channel. Today we are doing the final of the four scene box commanders from the uh, Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth holiday release product. And I wanted to save the one that I was the most intrigued to brew for last, and that was Galadriel Light of Valinor. Um, what I was most intrigued for for this one is we have a Bant Elves commander, and I thought that was going to be pretty darn interesting uh, for a lot of reasons, and so that's what I did. I built a Bant Elves deck. Um, the deck list will be down in the description if that's all you care about, but Let's rock into it. Gladriel is a 5-mana 3-3 three, three elf noble with alliance. It says whenever another creature enters the battlefield into your turn, choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn. So the cool part is we do get to do them in the order that we want, which I, think, which I feel like is really beneficial um, to, of course, route our turns and make sure we're doing things in the way we want to. Choices are add triple green, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control, and scry two, and then draw a card. There's a lot of things to read on this card in the sense of what we have access to, but I chose to pick uh, two in, in all reality. I mean, we'll use the triple green mana, of course, but we're gonna play into the plus one, plus one counters, and we're gonna play into the scry. The reason is, is that Galadriel's actual card from the set, um, and in a little bit of a way, her pre-con uh, card, both care about scrying, and a couple of our other Lord of the Rings elves care about scrying as well. So I thought, well, scry two and draw cards on our commander. That's great. It means we're going to have access to it. And the middle one, putting a plus one, plus one counter on every creature you control, is something that's going to end up being very good for us because elves tend to be a tribe where we're going to go immense, we're going to go very wide. And generally, we need a way to end the game, some way to give us trample, some way to push through for damage. There's a couple ways we have to do that, and we'll talk about those. But what I think is going to help us out here is we're just going to have a very wide, very tall board state um, with Galadriel, hopefully. Now, we only get one plus one plus one counter each, each turn, but um, we're going to... We're using effects, and we'll talk about those cards when we get there, to take advantage of putting, hopefully, more than one counter on each turn, and then using our scrying to our benefit. Those are the two ones we're kind of paying attention to. The reason I'm not focusing on add triple green is the elves are a tribe that tend to just make a ton of mana. We're going to have more mana than we know what to do with at some point, and so I'm not really worried about adding triple green, although in the early parts of the game, triple green is going to be nice because it could mean just deploying another elf uh, to our board. Uh, I'm more worried about the bottom two. So let's get into the mana bases, and just like we talked about with all the other videos this week, I'm trying my best to keep the mana bases as, as down on cost um, as I can. We're playing the the Triome still because we're playing the uh, Checklands. We're, we have access to, of course, Command Tower and Exotic Orchard still here. And again, we're still in three pretty popular Commander colors, so we're almost always going to get our color. Path of Ancestry means a little bit more now in this deck because we're playing with the... Um, Tribal elements. We're gonna hopefully get that scry one. We're playing the seaside did citadel for a uh, triland. We're trying out Rivendell uh, because it comes in tapped unless we control a legendary creature. Add taps for blue, and for one of the blue, we can scry two only if we control a legendary creature. And again, we do have some effects in the deck that trigger every time we scry. So this will allow us to just get another scry trigger. And the rest is just our our um our mix of bant lands, red, uh, green, white, blue lands uh, to hopefully make sure we get all of our colors. The enchantments is where I think a lot of our decks, um, what we're trying to do is going to shine. And uh, there's some pretty fun enchantments in here, and some of our money is definitely coming from here. Well, from the scene box, and I, I said for this week we were trying to use as many of the cards that came in the scene box as we could in each deck. We have a Boreal Alliance, X Green Green. For enchantment, when it comes in, we make an XX Treefold Creature Token, and whenever you, we attack with one or more elves, we populate, so choose a token and create a copy of it. What I like about this card specifically is um, on a turn where maybe we don't have a ton of elves to play, but we have a ton of access to a ton of green mana, we put this down for an absurdly large amount number, and then we just attack with elves and get more copies of this big tree folk that could sit back and block. That's what I like about this card, um, and it's going to be pretty darn helpful. Beastmaster Ascension to pump the board. 
Whenever a creature we control attacks, we put a counter on it, and as soon as it hits seven counters, all of our creatures get plus five, plus five. This is going to make them harder to deal with, and then all we need is one um, trample enabler uh, to push through uh, to push through forward damage. And I think that's um, part of what we need the deck to do is to get trampled. There's plenty of ways to do it, um, and I think we can find our ways that we, we like to do it. Broker's Ascendancy, three mana enchantment, says at the beginning of your end step, put a counter, puzzle and puzzle counter each creature you control, and a loyalty counter each planeswalk you control. This is another, another way to add another counter to all of our creatures and start buffing them up every turn. Same thing with Feldar Retreat. Whenever a land comes in we choose, we can get a cat token, or we can put a counter on each creature, and then they get Vigilance, which is pretty cool as well, because then they can attack and still tap for their mana abilities. Flowering of the White Tree, to give our legendary creatures plus two, plus one, and more one, and to give all of our non-legendary creatures plus one, plus one. Um, on second thought, as I sit here, I, I actually think that, although I like Flowering of the White Tree, and it's a great card, I actually kind of think... The more that I think about this, this deck is going to need Trample. And, and we'll talk about it. I have other ways to do it. But I think something like Garrick's Uprising is just going to make a little bit more sense. It gives all of our creatures flat Trample. Whenever Creature Power 4 Greater comes in, we draw a card, which um, our creatures could come in bigger. And we'll talk about how that works, uh, especially with th things that just bluff our board. But again, I think we need another access for Trample. Growing Rates of Itlamok. When it comes in, we look at the top four. We can put a creature from among them into our hand. And then at the beginning of our end step, if we control four more creatures, we can flip it over, and it turns into a, an effective Gaia cradle, Gaia's Cradle, which either taps for a green or taps for a green for each creature we control. This can make a ton of mana on the backside, and all we got to do is get it to flip on the front side. And that's not going to be very hard, because as an elves, as a drive, just make a lot of creatures. Uh, Guardian Project. Anytime a non-token creature comes in, if it doesn't share a name with any other creature we control, we draw a card. This is good because it's going to help us refill our hand. Um, Intruder Alarm is an interesting, very interesting card. Uh, it says creatures don't untap during their controller's untap steps, but it says whenever a creature enters the battlefield, untap all creatures. This is a very easy card to combo with, and that's why it's in here. We want to take advantage of being able to add mana with our creatures and then untap and to attack you know, with them. Um, Intruder Alarm can be kind of a dangerous card because, it, uh, of course, it promotes combos. We're not playing any direct combos I can think of with Intruder Alarm. Uh, the really, the th uh, other than just trying to be able to tap a creature for mana and then get it to untap and attack with it or use other things. Obviously, as a, as a tribe, elves make a ton of mana. And so the more mana we can get, the the more we're just going to be able to to use it. So that, that's my intention with, uh, with Intruder Alarm is tap our creatures for mana get a creature to come in and tap all creatures. Um, and then untaps all of our creatures, allows us to make more mana. That's my intention with Intruder Alarm. If you want to play more into the Intruder Alarm, believe me, there's plenty of ways you can take advantage of Intruder Alarm, but that's what we're trying to do. Kindred Discovery allows us to draw a card anytime a elf comes in or attacks. That's pretty great because it's going to allow us to refill our hand. Lost Isle Calling from the main set, whenever we scry, we put a counter on it. And for six mana, we can exile it, draw a card for each counter on it. And then if it had seven or more counters on it, we take an extra turn. So this is a way for us to help close out the game, build a pretty big board state, exile it, draw a bunch of cards, take that extra turn, and hopefully win that game in combat. Reflections Lit Jara. Choosing elves, of course. Anytime in it, we cast an elf, we get a copy of it, which is pretty cool. Uh, the only downside would be our legendary elves. But other than that, we're not playing that many of them. So I think we'll still be able to take good advantage of Lit Jara. And again, the deck which can make a ton of mana, we're not worried about a five-man enchantment. Simic Ascendancy is a card that will prevent it, present us another option to win the game. For three mana, we can put a counter on a creature, and whenever we put one or more counters on a creature, we put that many growth counters on Simic Ascendancy. And it's at the beginning of our upkeep, if we have 20 or more growth counters on it, we win the game. Um, Galadriel putting a plus one, plus one counter on everything once per turn on our turn, and some of these other effects we're talking about that are putting counters on thing. If we see Simic Ascendancy, we should be able to set this up pretty darn quickly and uh, allow us to use it as a backup to win the game. Tribute to the World Tree from March of the Machine. This card makes just a ton of sense whenever a creature comes in. If it's three or greater, we draw a card. Otherwise, we put two plus one plus one counters on them. This will just grow all of our elves, especially uh, the tokens, because they're going to come in as one ones. A lot of these elves that make one one elves, those are just going to come in as three threes with counters already on them. And then Virtue of Loyalty, one of the pricier enchantments we're running, because uh, at the beginning of our end step, we put a plus one plus one counter each, on each creature we control, and we untap them, and we can make a token on the on the adventure. But mainly, we're looking for that pseudo-vigilance in that we get the counter and untap. 
Just three artifacts, Arcane Signet and Soul Ring, of course, our main two we're going to play in most Commander decks, but we're playing the Great Henge as well, and it's more it's more than worth the price. Um, come Cost Exiles to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures we control, which isn't going to be very hard in this deck to get it up big. We can pay tap it to add two green and add two uh, life. And then whenever a non-token creature enters, we put a counter on it and draw a card. So the intention is to have this act act like kind of like that Guardian project where we're putting counters on it and drawing cards. Getting up into the spells, we'll start with our, our instance. So Chroma's Will is another way for us to hopefully end the game. If we control our commander, we can choose both as we cast it. Or we pick one or the other. The first one, Flying, Vigilance, and Double Strike. The second one, Lifelink, Indestructible, and Protection from All Colors. Uh, if we have Galadriel out and we cast this, all of our creatures are going to be basically unblockable and have double strike and lifelink. That should allow us to end a game, hopefully, with how wide our board state's going to be. Uh, beast Within, for some removal, can hit any permanent, and its controller makes a 3-3 beast. This is helpful because it can hit lands if a land ever were to become a problem. But mainly it's just going to, most of the time, this is meant to hit, in my opinion, I see it hitting more artifacts and enchantments and anything else but again hitting the creature if we need to makes a ton of sense well we're going to make a ridiculous amount of mana and so i think something like quarter calling makes a ton of sense uh we can convoke so we can tap creatures tap our tokens to help pay for it if we want to but we pay it choosing a value for x search your library for a creature card with cmc or mana value x or less and put it onto the battlefield then shuffle this is great on like somebody's end step if we want to go get a particular creature and have it for our turn we just quarter calling on their end steps, set up, and be ready to go. And the the best quarter calling target for us um, is going to be uh, Azuri, and we'll talk about Azuri when we get up to the creatures. Uh, counter spell, just to counter a spell. I think counter play is important in any game of commander if you can play it, and uh, we're in the right color, so why not take advantage of it? Galadrim uh, Ambush. They make X11 Elf Warrior Creature Tokens, where X is the number of attacking creatures. And we prevent all damage when we dealt this turn by non-elves. This has got a card that can protect us from a big attack. Or, if one of our opponents is taking a big attack that might be beneficial for them, we just stop that attack and make a bunch of elves, which is pretty cool. Uh, we can punish other tokens players, other go-wide players, and just make a ton of elves. Galadriel's Dismissal. We can pay a white to make target creature phase out, or if we kick it for four, for two and two white total, we can make all creatures target player controls phase out instead. This could uh, free the board for us for a big attack. This could stop one someone from comboing off. I think this is a really interesting card, and even just for one mana to make something phase out is pretty darn important because you can stop definitely stop a combo that way. Grow Spiral for a little bit of ramp, draw a card, and we can put a land from our hand onto the battlefield. Uh, Grow Spiral can be a little bit dangerous because you're not always guaranteed to have a draw land if you don't have one in your hand, but it's great when you do have a few spare ones in your hand because you get to get one of them down for free. Heroic Intervention to protect our board, given all of our things hexproof and destructible. Not going to protect from mass exile board wipes like Farewell. But it hopefully will protect us from most board wipes in the game, the Wrath of Gods, the Blasphemous Axe, things like that. And that's what most protection spells are there for. Reality Shift to exile a creature and their opponent manifests top card of the library. We want to we want to use things like swords and reality shift to get a good mix of removal between exile and destroy. Of course, exiling sometimes can be better, uh, depending on what we're hitting. And uh, we just like that reality shift is cheap for what it does. Same thing with swords to plowshares. The downside is opponent get some life, but if it stops someone from using a creature for a combo or doing something really good or hitting us for a ton of damage, I don't think we mind giving them the life at all, especially how bo how wide our board can go. Unbreakable Formation is just an indestructible spell, but if we play it in our main phase, we put a counter on each of our creatures and they gain Vigilance. And I think that's really important because that means we can take a big attack and then tap all of our creatures for mana and do our thing. So, um, not really a highly rated protection spell as far as its main ability goes, but I mean, when we can get indestructible and put a counter on everything and give it vigilance, I think that's an absolute win win. And then Windslip Slice, target creature we control deals damage equal to its power to a target creature you don't control, and we make elves equal to the difference. Uh, that's Delve Nexus. This isn't going to be very hard if we have a big creature like a like a Marwyn where that gets bigger for the more elves we have. Um, when Swift Slice is just going to be really easy to get a good target on and hit one of our opponent's targets. We pick the smallest target we can, get all those elves, and then uh, take advantage of them. Get into the sorceries, and um, this is where we have the privilege of having access to um, 
being this video being the last one to be released before we get into Ixalan content, um, we we have access to one card from Ixalan that I'm pretty excited to play here. But we'll start we'll start first with our ramp. Cultivate Kadama's Reach. Both get up to two basic lands, but one on the battlefield tap, one into our hand. Farsi can go get a Plains, Island, Swamp, or Mountain card. This can go get our Triome, and this can also get some other lands in our deck, so we really like this one. Nature's Lore, same thing, can get our Triome, or can get a Forest card that has a dual typing. Uh, that mainly is something like Canopy Vista, uh, but we do have access to just go get basic lands, you know, if need be. Uh, and then Rampant Growth can go get any basic land put on the battlefield tapped. Elven Farsight, a one mana scry three, and then reveal the top card if it's a creature draw card. S is a is a you know is an odd card in its own, but again in a deck where we're gonna get up to some of these elves who care about scrying, I think this card's more than worth it. And this can reveal a creature and draw us a card automatically, draw that creature, or it can just you know let us see what's coming up. Your bottoms and things, put the things on top we want, and, and keep the game going. Uh, one of our finishers is going to be Finale Devastation. We search our library or graveyard for a creature card with mana value X or less and put it on the battlefield. If X is 10 or more creatures we control, get plus X, plus X, and haste until end of turn. Uh, Finale Devastation is a green card that most always uh, is searched for a big creature that gives your board trample or gives a, gives a buff, but I think Finale on its own, if we do it for 10, we can go hopefully get the right creature plus 10 plus 10 or more to our entire board and just uh, i mean i i would i would guess end a game uh, because of the haste what's nice about this is any of the tokens we've created that turn or anything are going to get haste and be able to attack and with most elf four states and how wide they go this will help us in the game another another trample enabler for us is overwhelming stampede five minute to give our creatures plus x plus x where x is the greatest power among creatures we control so uh, of course, we're trying to put counters on all of our creatures. We're going to make them bigger and bigger. And this just gives that trample and plus X plus X. And this is going to be a quick way to end a game, depending on how big our board is. Preordained for a little bit of scrying and then drawing. And again, we'll talk about some of our elves that care about scrying. So this is going to be kind of a, a two in one. Raise the Palisade, you choose creature type and return all creatures that aren't that type to their owner's hands. This is a way I expect us to help in the game, as um, not every deck's going to be playing elves. So if we cast this card with a big board, call elves, and everyone else picks up all their creatures and have no blockers, you know, the, the taller our board state is, the quicker the game is going to end at that point. Rally the Galadrium. We create a token, this copy of Tar Creature we control, and we can spire. So as we cast it, we can tap two untapped creatures. A share color with it. If we do, we copy it and choose a new target for the copies. We can get two copies if we want to. Um, obviously, can't pick anything that isn't legendary because, uh, of course, a legendary rule. But, uh, but others, I think there's going to be some other things we can pick here. Get copies, get get things moving. And then w one of the reasons we talked about Ixalan, and I think there's a couple other, there's one or two other spells from this Merfolk deck that we'll talk about later that I think fit in this deck. But the one I really like is Wave Goodbye. This is return each creature without a plus one plus one counter to its owner's hand. This is going to do the same thing as Raise the Palisade. Hopefully our entire board should have a plus one plus one counter it once we get Galadriel and put exactly one creature in, which means this is hopefully for most of the game just going to bounce our entire opponent's boards back to their hand. Now, we're eventually going to hit the one game where we play a commander, right? We're going to hit those few games where we play a deck that has plus one, plus one counters as well. But that's okay. I think this is going to help us with most of the rest of the decks in the format and uh, just going to help us out in general. And four mana, just like this five mana phrase, the Palisade, is a, is a great price to do it. All right, well, let's talk through our elves. We're only playing one white elf and talking about Bant, you know, going from blue-green that was the elf's uh, pre-con for this, for this set and going into Glandro, and that's Rumor Gatherer. It says, whenever another creature enters ba the battlefield under your control, scry one. If it's the second time this turn, it's resolved. Uh, draw a card instead. So to my understanding of the way Alliance works is... Um, we're always going to scry one with another creature comes in, and we'll see some of the advantages we get off some of our abilities when we scry for cards. And then the second time, we draw a card instead. But again, we're just going to always get that scry one. Oh, sorry. And Aragorn and Arwen wed a six-mana elf, 3-6, with Vigilance, and whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, we put a counter on each creature we control and gain a life for each creature we control. This is going to help us, again, spread those counters and gain some life. Arwen and Damiel, whenever we scry, we put a counter on target creature, and we can pay six mana to scry two. Again, we have so many ways to scry in our commander in other ways. She's just going to spread out counters for us. Arwen Weaver of Hope is a pretty fun card because it says each other creature you control that enters the battlefield 
enters the battlefield with a number of plus one, plus one counters on it, equal to Arwen's toughness. So the bigger she gets, the bigger our creatures are going to get in turn. And so she's a great one to set up early if we can. Beast Whisperer, whenever we cast a creature spell, draw a card. This is uh, kind of like that Guardian project, going to help us refill those cards up in our hand. We have our pair of Elrond cards. The first one, Elrond Lord of Rivendell. Whenever it or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, scry one. If it's the second time it's resolved this turn, the ring tempts us. We do, like I said, did have one or two cards that cared about the ring tempting us, but not too, too much. But again, that scry one's important, especially when we're going to be drawing cards. And um, The cool part is if we have an effect like Elrond and we have that effect like Guardian Project, what we can do is have the scry go off first to see what the top card of our deck is and then do the draw instead of drawing before we want to scry one, you know, so we can take advantage of it that way. Elrond Master of Healing, whenever we scry, we put a plus one, plus one counter on each up to X target creatures where X is the number of cards looked at it. So, um, and just these little scry ones, we're just going to be adding one counter, but it says whenever a creature we control the plus one, plus one counter, it becomes the target of a spell or an ability opponent controls, we draw a card or we may draw a card. So this is great because, again, we're going to continue to spread counters and then draw cards if our things get targeted. Elvish Arch Druid giving all of our creatures, our elves, plus one, plus one, other than it, and taps for a green for each elf. We control this type of ability is going to be really good because the more creatures on board, the more green mana we get. Elvish Mariner, uh, one of the new elves that really cares about us scrying. Whenever it attacks, we scry one, which is cool. But its second ability is what we really care about. Whenever we scry, we tap up to X target non-land permanence where X is the number of cards looked at while scrying this way. So if we get a big turn where we're scrying a bunch, we may be able to just tap our entire opponent's board state down, all their creatures down, and get free attacks in with Elvish Mariner out. It makes it a really good card if we can be continuously scrying. Elvish Mystic, of course, one of the classic one mana green elves to tap for mana. We're playing Elvish Mystic and Llanowar Elves. Uh, we're not playing the Finhorned Elves because I don't think we're going to have any problem with mana, especially with some of the creatures we have, but... They each just tap for one green mana. Elvish Warmaster says whenever one or more elves enter the battlefield under your control, we make a 1-1 one, one elf warrior creature token. It only happens once per turn. And then for seven mana, elves get plus two, plus two, and death touch till the turn. Again, this is a great one to get down early because we we get it in and get that 1-1 one, one every time we're, every turn we're putting creatures in and building our board state. Azuri, one of our finishers... Uh, comes down for three mana. For one green, we can regenerate another target elf. Uh, I won't get into a dissection of what regeneration is. We can look that up and talk about that another time. But for five mana, elves we control get three plus three plus three and trample on the turn. This is another way for us potentially in the game. Tap something like Elvish Arch Druid for a bunch of green mana. We can activate that Azuri ability as many times as we have mana for. Once you see Azuri get, you know, get activated two or three times in the same turn, you know that game's probably over uh, because those elves are going to be massive. Gallagreeters feels great, um, especially in a deck that's going to have many creatures coming in. Uh, whenever a creature comes in, we choose one that hasn't been chosen, put a counter on it, create, create a tap treasure, or draw two life. So again, we're almost always going to get counters on it and just get some treasure for next turn. Uh, Galadrim, Galadrim Brigade has a fun ability that we've seen a couple times called Squad. So the way it works is an addition, additional cost to cast this. We can pay one in a green in any number of times. If we do, we get that many copies of it. And it says other elves you control get plus one, plus one. So if we just have a ton of green mana on a turn, we could make a bunch of copies of this and just buff our entire board up like crazy. And this is from the scene box as well. Galadriel Lothlorien. Uh, from the main set, whenever the ring tempts you, if you can tr choose a creature other than Galadrium, we scry three. And whenever we scry, you may reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land, we can put it on the bottom to the battlefield tapped. So um, we're going to scry a lot, and this could allow us to cheat in those lands um, off scrying, which is something, again, we're probably going to be doing every turn no matter what because of... Um, because of... Uh, because of uh, our go regular Galadriel or Commander Galadriel's ability. Uh, Imperious Perfect, three mana, it says other elves you control get plus one, plus one, and green to tap it to make a token. So again, that's pretty great because um, we're giving the flat buff, but we're also making tokens. Uh, Dura Duraga Warcaller is pretty fun, has multi-kicker, so we can pay it any number of times while we're casting this spell. It comes in with a plus one, plus one counter on it for each time it was kicked. And other elves get plus one, plus one for each plus one, plus one counter on Duraga Warcaller. So this works great in two ways. One... If we multi-kick it, it comes in with counters. But otherwise, every time uh, we get a counter on this card, whether it's from Galadriel or from some burn enchantments, it's just going to buff every other elf we have. Then our Lone Speaker adds a man of any color, or for, to, we can tap it to make a land into an elemental uh, if we need to get an extra attacker. 
Marwyn, uh, one of the, our more infamous elves in the deck. When an elf comes in, we put a counter on it, and we can add for an amount of green mana equal to Marwyn's power. So the more elves we have, the more counters go on it. The more counters we put on it, the more mana we get. Marwyn is great, and she... Um, Definitely gives us access to a bunch of mana. That's exactly what we want. Priest of Titania, two mana elf. That taps for green for each elf on the battlefield. Again, great. The more elves we have, the more mana we get. Rex Sage comes in and destroys target artifact or enchantment, which is great because that happens when it comes in, and then it's just an elf that can get buffed like the rest of ours. Rishgard Pima Renegade comes in and puts a counter on each up to two creatures, and then every creature with a counter on it has added, tapped to add a green, which is going to allow all of our tokens to tap to add mana as well. Um, is this a perfect elf deck? Of course not. I think um, I don't play a ton of elves uh, tri uh, in my in my personal time, so of course there's probably some syn synergies I'm missing, um, but I think this is a really interesting start to a, a banned elves deck, especially adding some of those uh, enchantments that we get access to being in white. Um, I like adding things like, you know, Aragorn and Arwen to gain some life and get some extra counters. And again, in a deck like ours, we're not going to be hurting for mana, especially green mana. So being able to cast some of these more expensive creatures is not going to be uh, that big of a deal. Again, I think the deck has good through lines to end, end the game. I think we got good ways to boost up our entire board. And I'd be half intrigued to try a deck like this. Maybe this is the kind of deck that would get me into elves. Um, I don't know. It, it, I think my problem is I've, I, I've talked many times about my favorite mono green deck being Soraka, you know, Gorklaw, and now Soraka and Gorklaw. And so I think I always just needed another color to make me interested in elves. I thought the Lord of the Rings elves were really cool being in Simic. I thought that added a lot of fun to the elves, especially when it came to scrying. But I think this Galadriel adds exactly what I would want from the elves, stacking up the counters, making the go wide more more efficient, and having access to so many ways to um, deal, you know, take advantage of the white and the blue. But let me know what you think of Galadriel uh, down in the comments. That deck list is in the description for you, and I will catch you guys next time.